Happy Monday. I told you not to make that noise, and you keep making that noise, and I tried to tape you, and then you had snapped. Get out of my face, man. He doesn't listen! We left off, this is the spec truck, or the trophy truck, dude. Or the 6100, or the race car. We left off with some tin work started. We left off with a little bit of the arrow for like the, the dash pods, um, the hoods or the cowls for the displays. So one side is complete here. That side's still chilling the same way. And then what we have is a pretty much, I would say we have everything completely chunked out as far as all the front tin work uh, and all the ventilation, everything's been kind of thought through, but this thing's got a really, really good presence to it. It would really pass as a truggy, but it's cool to know this stuff will be under the bodywork. This is my Colin appreciation uh, episode here. Well, I guess everything always is with him, but this is just another thing to watch someone excel and watch someone optimize their life. Both of both Colin and Alex right now are on 75 hard, like two weeks of 75 hard. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, but I'm like, I feel like I'm building little soldiers here. Everybody is like optimizing their life. Everybody is taking care of their health and their diets and their work is like reflecting all that stuff and we are operating at the highest level that we ever have as a team and it's extremely impressive. When I was younger, God, I don't, I'm not gonna start saying that. I'm not gonna say it anymore. Couple years back, working out of my Laverne house in the two car garage, I used to take templates and part of my hustle there is I would do light bar brackets. I don't know if I've mentioned that in another episode, but I, you know, like the LED bars were, were hitting pretty hard in like 2012 and 2013. And I would like every weekend I'd hustle like two installs. I'd build the brackets custom to the truck. I'd square up the light, like all my driveway. Neighbor next door to me all butt hurt. Um, sometimes cars parked in the grass. But a lot of the fab I did in the garage, I had templates. Like I, I started to push pin or tape all the templates on the side. And I like, I ended up filling up the walls. And then at one point I'm like, all right, I'm done. But these are, I'm gonna keep because not only are they cool, but they're kind of like a very special milestone for like our, our first race car. It might be our last race car, but also like there's a design language going on here that's unlike anything we've ever done. And it is the most like organic and like creative, but functional setup that we've ever done. And there's a lot going on here, but it also makes sense. Kind of some of the templates. Part of the design process here would you like to make a joke about this? Would you like to make a joke? Okay. Get it out. Let's move through it. Part of the design process here, panel design. There is a flow here. So think about this too. I'm going to jump around, whatever. Part of this is actual, like this is a shock pocket, right? This is for the coilover. Uh, and then all of these openings are actually going to get mesh. 
and they're getting custom mesh as well. Stay tuned. So as, as like cavernous or as Swiss cheesy as it looks, all of these will be covered with a uh, mesh or like a hex kind of design. So it will still actually be some kind of surfacing in here. It won't just be voids. Uh, but everything is well thought out. Everything is there for a reason. Even some of like the bead, like the steps and stuff are to make accommodations for the Zeus buttons. Uh, it's just, we put a lot of thought into this, but what I'm getting at with the templates is in order to get good design like this, that kind of still flows, it, you can't just take like, you can't take the panel off and then put it on the table and then just like, all right, that's gonna look cool because if you start doing dramatic design like this, like like hits where they flow here and then they pick up back down here and everything kind of corresponds and flows, you won't get that if you're just doing like an individual panel by itself on the table and then following up with another panel. You just don't get that tie-in where that, that hit is supreme. So that's those, I just wanna save those. I do that with stuff, I have like a corner, I have like, some screw ups of things like, but there were nice panels that I save. And then I save a lot of templates under my toolbox that are just like, I would like to look back on them. It's almost like a photo album or something like it's a keepsake where I can go, Oh man, I remember that. And they're like little milestones of things. And I, I like, I'm grateful for my journey and I value all my opportunities and that's part of it. So at some point, like I can have a room, probably a room full, of all these trinkets, you know, just like my little collection of stuff where I can go back and I can remember those things that I did and I can remember the time where I was at in my life. I can remember like what my struggles were at that point or where my growth was at that point and they're like milestones to me. So templates like that, like I'm always gonna know this and maybe later, years later, we can go back and we can look at all these collectively um, and with the other ones, you know. So last time we had just the general hit here. I think we had outer perimeter panel. We had inner perimeter panel, matching panel for the inner perimeter there. Um, you're you know, kind of just holding your profile or your silhouette. And then we had some of the hood. Man, I remember I rotated like three different terms, but we'll just call them like a display hood. Um, we had some of that done. Kevin came, we adjusted the height on the driver's side just to make it a little more feasible for his hands. He's got really, really big, big hands, you know. So made that more feasible for him. Um, didn't uh, affect anything. What we ended up actually doing is instead of making the deck height higher for the driver, we just pushed it a little forward um, just so it clears like top steering wheel to knuckle ratio. Uh, but you can see this stuff's, I think only this fin is in. This is 90 thou. This is, this outer portion is 90,000. So if there's like rocks, big stuff, it's not gonna dent this. Um, it'll just kind of deflect instead because this will see some use. Now again, remember, once that panel's on, fiberglass, like your A pillar is gonna come down and then your body panel transition to the hood is probably gonna be in this vicinity. So we'll have to do a notch, like a kind of custom notch that, that's tailored to this. And we will also have like this radius and that kind of cowl portion, like that slope from this transition back, that will be um, a little sunk in almost instead of like a, like a cowl hood where you see it raised in the middle, it'll kind of be like a drop center hood. Um, it'll still have extraction points, which I would call these extraction fins or gills or whatever you want. Um, those will be in the middle perimeter. They won't be, just like we talked about last episode, there'll be a service panel but they won't actually have extraction where stuff's gonna fall down into the engine. It will have some kind of screen on top. So same kind of concept as this, except the, the execution will be a little different where there'll be like a mesh cutout almost like this. And then the extraction vents, the directional vents will be under that, um, just for obvious reasons. Now, I don't know where we wanna start. I think we should go to the back of the truck and look at the panel work because 
what's been going on is, is Colin, like that was my plan. Once he gets through the fabrication, like actual hard mounting of stuff, then I want to have him start on the panel work. And I knew that the one thing I wanted to focus on was going to be Zeus button orientation and layout on the chassis because there's a lot of design wins that you can either get or you can shit the bed on that stuff. So I wanted to help him just, and this whole thing I've done that I've navigated, you know, tangent, Colin and I are at this point where we work really good together. Um, he understands all my sketchiness. He understands all my hand stuff and, you know, terminology to the point where it's pretty seamless and we get like really fast, efficient results. And he's just an assassin. I've, I've never seen someone progress like he has. And I don't, I never progressed like that either. It's just a, one of the most driven individuals I've ever seen in off-road fabrication, motorsports fabrication. Um, that being said, we like him finish all the fab work and then it was going to turn into starting to rough out all the panels. And I think we even talked about that last episode. So we can go to the back and, and see where he started and then we'll, we'll move right back to the front. Something to note here, this is like, this is one of the, I think this is probably one of the most simple panels to do on a truck because they all have like this, most all cars have this basic vertical side profile, elongated trapezoid shape. Um, but again, figuring out where the winds can be on the, the button like orientation. And these are all kind of hammering down in like a diagonal where it's got pulled, it's like pulled tension. It's almost like they, everything was straight like blinds and then you shh, and pulled them all that way and they're like slatted. Um, so these are all roughed out, but they're, when I say roughed out, that means that like the perimeter is not completely cut yet. Uh, it's just, there's lots of excess and then they're, they're maxed out. Like their notch is, is as tight as it gets, right? So all of that, it's all like this, you know, for race applications, especially we might want to open up all of the clearances just to get them on and off easier. But you can see like this, they're tight right now. And that's, that's how I want them because I'd rather have them be tight from the start. And then we trim them and we put kind of design even into the clearancing. Uh, one thing to note too, you can kind of see Kind of see what we got here. This hole in, this is the, the upper tube structure that we added uh, a while back. You can see that the mount here for the jack pump and tank is all built by design to not hang down below the perimeter of these tubes so we can tin the whole thing from the underside. That was one of our intentions from the start. And it's the same thing here. You can see like where the jacks go through you can see the uh, upper link clearance. And there's some overlap in there, so we'll get under here and check this out. So you can see there's complete enclosure in here. That's from, uh, like you can obviously see where our AGM jacks are. And kind of their, their positioners here. You can see everything like the tight notching going around again. And then this is obviously like stylized clearance for the upper links. But this is the real uniform way to do things. Um, there's panels. So like the other thing too is these panels are removable by priority. So we know that like the coolers are in the front section. You know that the middle portion kind of has like an overlap. Zoomed out. So this middle portion would come off first, the side portions come off, and then at the same time after these two come off, then you can get this one off. And this is one big, this is one side, two side, three side here. So once that thing comes off, then this drops, but there's really nothing back here. We don't have batteries back here or anything. So uh, it just, it's, that's the way you want to prioritize everything. There's a lot of room here. That big cutout is for our limit straps just because the clevis is quite a ways up there. So you want to kind of 
leave some room for like articulation and just the strap moving around. But you can kind of see like the whole goal with this thing is, is to streamline the entire exterior skin. So that's kind of what we have under here. It's just, there's no like tubing, there's nothing exposed. And that not only helps for like the tidiness of things, but it also helps for the arrow and creating no pockets where this drag. So something else to think about too is a lot of this area is all gonna get bead rolled, right? So like most of the whole, the chassis is, is roughed out like I mentioned. And you know, again, the, the edges, oh, that's that same panel. Most of the edges are, you know, longer. So we can get those perfectly parallel. Um, and you know, same with any, anything else. Like it's just, it's just enough information here to move to the next step. Uh, all the buttons are laid out, all the holes are located. And what that does too is having, like knowing where all the holes are, that gets me the opportunity to really get good bead roll design and also seeing all the panels on the car. I, I would rather design this whole thing where I can see where every single panel needs to go and then I can really draw the layout for all the steps and the bead rolls into the design of the car and make it work for the area instead of just you know, make everything with this perimeter and then this radius and, and it just, it looks exactly like what you did. Instead of really tailoring each panel to its specific duty uh, and its specific portion of the car where it complements everything else. I think there's a huge win to be had with design like that and it, it's so easy to do if you just think about the process. So that's what we'll have here. You know, there'll be, this, this is obviously like the, the uh, tail shaft of the transmission there. And you know, the, the loop here, the drive shaft loop, and then this will all have like nice steps in it. It'll all have returns here, like a step return where that panel overlaps on the other one. Uh, and the same here. I don't think we're gonna have any venting back here. We're just gonna have nice, you know, steps, complementary steps to add rigidity to the panels. Again, the, the main reason that you have um, a step roll, you know, or a, a bead roll in a panel is to add rigidity. And I've kind of given you that reference before. It's just like if you had a piece of paper and it's flimsy and then you like kind of pull, you know, you take your finger and you, you fold a seam in there and it adds that rigidity. And then, and then that paper, based on how much of that you have, that paper gets extreme, extremely rigid and it's the same concept. Yeah, so next thing, Colin ripped. So we ripped the easy guys first, hit that middle portion on the rear chassis, and then really wanted to dive into this. These are all like, we knew things were gonna get complicated up front. So getting all this back stuff is kind of good warm up, like a preliminary run before going to the front. Uh, another thing we wanted to do is we wanted to add a dimensional hit here um, where there adds cooling. There's a lot of flow that goes through like the body, obviously you can see like the contours of this tube. That's where the body, like the, you know, there's air going through here and the exhaust is one thing, but there's also more sections of air where you can play off that and you can get your shocks some kind of cooling and you get some kind of flow back here. So instead of running the typical, like to the outside perimeter here, we dove this one in. Um, this is obviously all modular. The bottom one here is also separate. So Something to think about is this is a panel that gets a lot of wear, uh, rock spray, all kinds of kind of collateral damage. So what we wanted to do is make sure that this one was removable. It actually goes under here just cause it's hanging out here, but it, this, this panel itself goes up and then wraps here and it'll have a step roll in here that'll on this panel that'll kind of catch it and let it be flush. So everything is indexed in. It's the same with this one. This one actually goes on top of this one. So there's gonna be a lot of beautiful kind of stuff, like just like you see here, right? Where this panel goes up and it, and it captures, you know, this, this part steps down and then captures the backside of this panel. That's the same as what will be here. This panel has that return that goes up and comes here and then this panel will capture. This panel will go here and it'll be captured, you know? So everything will have design in it. And then on top of that, like the, the exhaust and the header, 
that kind of runs its course here and runs a parallel with this plane. And we'll put like a bead roll, like a step roll through here. And I'll probably design the step to kind of incorporate what shapes are going on with the exhaust. So we'll, you know, we'll have our step for the return here. And then we'll also have like a nice dynamic layout that kind of complements what's going on here. Part of this, and this is just where I'm going to do Bluetooth freestyle on the back of this thing. Part of this is not done. This is just cut long or not cut yet and left long, but we'll cut this down just to do elbow clearance um, where this, this tube will have another panel that kind of comes in here. So this will be like a dimensional, like a ducting, three dimensional duct here. What happens here is this leads out and right as this wraps around behind the shock mount, this panel is going to start and it's going to go all the way up here to the roof. Not to this because this is going to go away, but really to the roof. And it's going to run back here. It's going to run the same plane here, you know, on this chassis plane, run high. And this whole program is going to be tin work. And it'll probably come right about to the bump zone. And then that's where we'll really start playing with the shapes and where we want to lead off. And a lot of that is going to be for arrow. So it's kind of, uh, you know, unknown territory here. We'll get with Ben and figure out like what we want for design and style. And if we want like shape, maybe we don't want this to be completely vertical all the way up. Maybe we need to run like some kind of a break over, you know, and channel some of this. Maybe that needs to come through here. So at least what I'm doing is I'm just setting up enough rough information to get us right to the exit of like the, the back of the cab here or the roof panel. And then we'll move from there. I think the only thing we've really added mounting wise, we put, we had to put the pressure relief in there for the power steering just to get the notch right. And then obviously we talked about running like a custom uh, power steering cooler with a custom reservoir. And Charlie with power steering solution, he said the best thing to run is your big old long daddy reservoir cooler with, um, you know, your filter on the bottom. So that's mounted, it has to be there. And we really just kind of made the move with that stuff to just do tight notching, leave it as it is. This panel went, can stay in here for the most part, but you know, all this stuff is thought about like where it's, it's easy access of, and stuff comes off easy and it's not locked in. Like even some of like this notch, right? You're like, whoa, why is that so gapped right here? It's also everything can come out easy. A lot of the shapes here, like I talked about on the other side, they're dictated by like where when you start taking up a lot of real estate on this stuff, you have to think about where the Zeus buttons go because a lot of times, like especially if you're doing step rolls and things, you run out of room with the Zeus button and then your dimples are either getting too close to the cuts or they're infringing on some of the shapes here. So we had to like, Colin and I had to pre-run everything, figure out exactly where we want buttons, what's tasteful, and what makes them not look like freckles where you're just like, you know, like try to find some kind of balance in here. Uh, and then everything up here is really just roughed in. So like I, I wanted to get you guys a, like under construction. I mean, I guess every update's like under construction, but this is really raw. Um, and the best part is like, I, I love how it looks right now. And I see the vision and I see the functionality and, and what'll be cool is to be able to come back and see this thing polished where it's all fluff and buff, all the mesh is in, all the hardware locations are in, all the Zeus button locations are in, the shocks are on, and you really understand like why all this is here. Like all of it makes sense. All of the extraction makes sense. Like it's the same with this. Let's look at that other side really quick. You know, it's the same even thinking about this, like if there's inevitable like rock splash and dirt spray and stuff that'll fly up and drop. And we even thought like, well, if that happens and we do like your typical panel work where you just block this whole section off, then all that crap falls down into the engine and then it just gets lost in there or it messes with the belts or just, you, you don't want stuff going into the engine bay. 
So everything that falls through here, this will be all mesh and it, and it just waterfalls out of here and drops off. Uh, everything is like built with purpose here. Um, there's obviously like cooling that needs to happen. So all of that is just ventilation. Um, and there's one that's still not cut out down here. The limit strap tabs are kind of ghosted in here. So I think last time we had these like the, the bulkheads here for the bumper in mock-up. Uh, when we got the car, like this is a two inch sleeve and then there's an inch and three quarter. Like sleeve, I mean a female and a male. And the part of the chassis here goes out towards like the, the windshield tube. And then from this two inch, there was also inch and three quarter that came out and kind of had like a, a weird bend in it. And then it was part of the bumper. So there was a bolt on part here. And then that same part of the bumper was just fully welded into here. And I, we had to make sense of like, well, if this is bolt on, which a, a bumper should be consumable for a race car, or it's either like in a sleeve here with a couple tacks or a stitch weld where you can cut it and it comes off easy. But it had two, it had bolt on area here and then weld here. So we really needed to find a solution that was something a little more realistic and a little more serviceable. So we built these bulkheads as kind of our typical thing. And this acts as a register for the bumper. And we'd, all we did was just adjust the bumper so we didn't have to make new tubes. We just cut it back further. And then we added a, um, like a pickup on the bumper where this aluminum slug actually goes inside of a chrome molly tube. And then the bolts go through and that whole thing is just part of this whole apparatus. So all the welding got done up here. I had to spend some time. All the reservoir mounts needed to be welded. So I just wanted to finalize some of that stuff before we started doing the panels. But everything is pretty buttoned up. Um, I think next time you can count on the tin being complete. We have like one panel over here that, that needs to clear the power steering pump and the belt. And that was kind of like a suspect panel for us. We tried the first one and it was, it was too far out. And you also have to think with this, we're constantly having to cycle the shocks on here to figure out where things are, you know, what kind of tolerances we get, what tolerances we get on the front panels with the bypass tubes, where the coilover droops out, how close does it get to this? And then also cycling the suspension without the shocks to figure out where the arms are gonna bind on some of the lower panels. So there's just, the more, the more you can put forethought into this stuff, the better end result you'll get for sure. But you can see that's, that's the last one we have. And this, the power steering pump and the pulley stick out further than sea level here with the, with the tangents of the tubes. So this does have to incorporate some kind of a, a bend or a break in here or a shape change. And that's what we had on this guy. So this is like our last one to actually cut out and step roll and all that. And then we really can start fine tuning this stuff. So I think that's something you guys can count on is just look for a complete sheet metal package, at least like dialed, um, I don't, I need to get this one done, but we're kind of pressing on this and I'm also pressing on Dan's truck. So we'll see where we're at. But um, this is kind of its, I don't want to say it's its final stage. It does need like the upper console done inside and then it needs like the light package done and some miscellaneous accessories. We're still waiting on coolers from CNR. Once they arrive, then we mount the coolers and then we're really like past the home stretch. So we get to see this thing. Uh, go next door to Evan and we're out of here and we're on to new things. The skinning part, like the skinning process on a, on a car is probably my favorite because it's like you get huge gains off of it. You can take a chassis that's, I guess call it the skeleton or the bare bones, and then you literally get to dress the thing and it, it completely changes everything because you add so much dimension to it. So this is like one of my most exciting parts. Um, same thing with this, like I've kind of gotten with Colin on, on where things need to go and we lay that out. And then really he, his understanding now, it's just like we worked for this. And this is what I've been dreaming of having with him where we can coincide with, with my design direction and then he can take it and execute it. And that's kind of what we've been doing. Like he'll get templates in here and then boom, I'll start sketching really loose on here. Like where I think stuff needs to go and how it's gonna flow and then boom, I'll pull it off, I'll tighten all of the template up on the table, and then I will cut and I'll transfer all of the layout onto the panels, and then boom, he takes it, bead rolls it, does the cutouts, puts it back on, you know, and does all the heavy lifting. So it's, it's just been like an awesome match to have something like that. 
and that's what I want to like. That's where I want to be with um, Alex and Alvaro too. It's just getting on that level where everything is is like this seamless um, orchestration of getting shit done. So we're gonna keep pushing on this. Expect to see. I I don't think we're gonna have mesh in here for a while because we're gonna get like a custom laser cut design instead of just like your woven stainless that we do. But I would expect this thing to be like fluff and buff, uh, all the Zeus buttons in, all the holes for hardware, and then have more work done on the back. Like just kind of have a complete tin package. I think that's your next update. So I hope you guys enjoyed this thing. This is kind of our, I feel like this is, the, like this is a way more raw update than some of the other ones. Um, and I hope you can appreciate it for that. So happy Monday, like, comment, subscribe.